Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. It's Thursday, and we are still here. I hope you are all still there as well, and still enjoying as well as you can our lockdown. Um, you know, I'm finding it different working from home, as I'm sure you all are. I tend to start early, have a mid-morning break for breakfast, uh, and just before I come on air, go and make sure everything's polished, rubbed, and washed. But anyway, it's uh, you don't want to know too much about how I'm doing things. I hope you're doing well. We have heard that uh, yesterday Claire mentioned that one Claire uh, Allen, who was on, I hope you saw that, she mentioned one of her staff uh, has got uh, a mild case of coronavirus. And unfortunately, we also heard from um, Carol Gibson in Devon that one of her branch members has now got it quite seriously. So we all send everybody our best wishes and I hope uh, as few people as possible get this and we can get on with being ICB bookkeepers once again. Now I'm delighted to have back with us today a very popular guest from oh, probably a couple of weeks ago now, I haven't checked, um, Julia Wedgwood. Julia, Hi hello. everyone. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Julia, as you know, she doesn't need me to blow a trumpet but I will do anyway. She, she's uh, the winner of a Luca Award for being mm an outstanding personality. Uh, so I think everybody probably knows Julia anyway. Uh, she, she is part of the Big Green Sage. And so uh, most of our members are completely conversant with Sage because at one stage during their, their dimmer distance class, they, they mainly learnt on Sage. And we still have a huge tranche of people working on Sage, either with clients or um, for themselves. So it's good to have you back with you, with us, Julia. A um, few new announcements over the last 24 hours. Some a bit confusing, others not. But I know that um, Sage, uh, where are we? Sage have got some good news for us about the things that they they are providing for us to help us through. So I'll let you have a go at that first, if you would. And I understand some of it's free. Yes, sage and free in the same sentence doesn't it mightn't be something that everyone's always used to hearing, but there are a number of um, great developments. So if you or any of your clients use Sage 50 payroll, we will be releasing a new tool next week called the job retention tool. And what that does is that will assess your workforce. It'll allow you to identify the pay elements that you're using. So, for example, you can include overtime, the certain elements that you can't include, and that will create a... So you'll determine the staff that have been furloughed. It'll do the assessment, do the calculation of the 80% entitlement over the given time period. So we now know it can go back it can extend further than um, 28th of March, so it goes to the 28th of Feb, goes to the 19th of March. And you can use that report, it'll generate letters to clients, i.e. employees, and it will also provide you with a report that allows you to go on the HMRC's portal and make that claim. So it's got everything you need as a bookkeeper that allows you to go on and record the information. Unfortunately, HMRC, unless you've got 100 employees or more, doesn't allow you to upload any files. It is a key in exercise. I've seen lots of discussions on the forums about this. At the moment, it provides you with that report so you can sit with that and key in the information, but you've got it all at hand without having to go anywhere to get the necessary uh, information. Can I just ask you a question there, Julia? Sorry, um, mm -hmm. I was distracted slightly there because uh, Carol, uh, I mentioned Carol Gibson and our, our member from her branch, which isn't doing very well. She's just come on to say, just to let you know that the member has recovered, still struggling and breathing. And this is a typical bit, but back at work. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the time to be bookkeeper for you. You know, they never give up. They are looking after their clients. They're not going to let a bit of coronavirus, um, coronavirus get in their way, which is something. Uh, just going back to what you were saying, there was an announcement made yesterday, I think you've just covered it, but I'm sorry if I missed it, mm. um, that the um, 
furloughing was going to be backdated so that people who had just joined a company, and this was a problem, would actually now be able to join. But um, it's only for a short period, isn't it? It's, so it, it is a relief yeah. for some people. They feel part of the crack, but not necessarily mm. all of it. But I use, and it's one of the queries, I was discussing it with Jackie Mount this morning. It's one of, uh, she wasn't quite sure she's getting mixed information. So if, you aren't, if you've laid somebody off because they joined after the 28th, mm. are we right in saying you now re-employ them and then you can put them back on the payroll? You, yeah, depending on where, where, where your processing was to. The important, I find you lost. Yeah, yeah. The important thing is, is they have been employed and paid, i.e. appeared on a HMRC submission. Right. To the 19th of March. So it all depends on how businesses pay the staff, etc. So if they're in arrears, they still may not meet that criteria. Right. So if you've if you've um, marked someone as leave, we've got articles that tell you how you would deal with those 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 members of staff. But I think if there's new people come in the business, so it's a new starter. Equally, someone joined on the first of March and have been paid, receive I appeared on a RTI submission up until the nineteenth of March they will be included in that assessment period. Great. Um, so they've already processed, presuming that person was going to be laid off. Do they rerun the payroll or do they tag them onto the next run? Um, if in, 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 the, in the case of this tool, this tool, um, you, it, it'll, you will select the employees. So these are the employees that have been furloughed yeah. irrespective and you put in the date range so look through what those employees have been paid during that time with payroll you have different pay, pay elements everyone's set different every different yeah salaried or whatever so depending on what your pay elements are you would select the relevant ones and then it'll do the calculation based on that and the employer's contribution so you've got the right information to input when you when you submit the HMRC in the tool, you'll be able to see um, what the calculations are. So if there's queries historically or there's errors corrected, we know there's details to be surfaced about corrections to submissions as it stands today. But on this the the tool that sits on on stage fifty payroll, you'll be able to see what's been claimed for pre what's been generated previously to submit in a return. Brilliant. Um, I think it sounded like a, a huge opening, but as I say, it's not quite. Mm. And, and again, uh, ICB members, just to stress, it is supposed to be for people who are genuine employees. So mm. if somebody is trying to get the husband or wife or three kids and auntie on the payroll and they think this is now an extra ability to do that, just please make sure that it is, a, it is an ongoing job. And I think when the audit comes through of all this, if people suddenly join the payroll and drop off in three months' time and go back to their normal day job, somebody somewhere is going to pick this up. And uh, we, so we don't want to be part of that as members. And obviously, as was said yesterday by Claire and as we said by various people, our clients are normally absolutely wonderful. They would ask, but they would not push it. They wouldn't be interested in doing anything that was incorrect. One or two might. And it's those one or two that we have to be very careful with. So uh, at the end of the day, you're putting your name to a set of an account, a set of accounts, and you have to be very careful. And uh, so yeah, so so that's good. Um, Jackie Mount actually has, has uh, been on a meeting for the last uh, two hours with the HMRC Tax Agent Strategy Group. So she may well be popping in at some stage if she's got anything brand new. If she has it to wrong brother, but I must just tell you that. She has been chasing up all of the questions that have been asked recently. She's been answering as many as she can. And, she, and one of them was quite a detailed inquiry. So rather than send it out as an email, she actually rang the member back. And she was talking to the member. And all of a sudden, the member said, oh, she said, so you're the seagull lady. Now, those of you who saw Jackie when she was on, all of a sudden, in the middle of her uh, doing her bit, 
a seagull landed on the roof of her uh, office, which is a lovely building out in, in the garden, and started making an awful noise. So anyway, the lady hadn't realised that this was Jackie Mount that she was talking to. And then when, when the penny dropped, she said, oh, yes, you're the seagull lady. So whatever happens, <laughs> that, that name will now stick. Jackie is the seagull lady. But um, anyway, so great. So I think things are moving along. I can imagine next Monday is going to be an absolute day of complete bedlam, isn't it? I mean, it's everybody trying to get on to that, onto that um, portal trying to do their entries. Uh, have you heard any more by way of confirmation that it is definitely Monday for the release? Um, HMRC, all, all the messages we're, we're getting is HMRC will, will be ready. Um, I think from, from our perspective, it's, it's trying to help businesses be ready. So make it easy for them to, take the pain out of the calculations to work out what is and what isn't and going back through pay slips that you would need to do, taking some of that burden away for, for practices. Um, doing the claim on behalf of clients, I think there's, it's important to know the authorisation level. I'm seeing a lot of discussions on public yeah. forums of, do I have the 64 aid? Will the FBI to, what does count? as an agent versus filer. So I think if there was there's some things to do to to make sure you're going to be able to log on that you've got all the client information because when you do RTI submissions through the software, it goes through the software. You've got the PAYE reference. Um, there's going to be additional information that HMRC needs such as um, UTR numbers for self self-assessment or corporation tax so it's just having all of that information at hand so if you're doing the claim for the client that you've got all of that information ready to log on and make that whole submission process people are checking their agent gateway agent yeah. hmrc gateway accounts as well to make sure they've got the clients listed because they're saying if the clients are listed on there and you can see the py information then you're going to be able to make that claim Otherwise, your clients should should be doing that. And I think HMRC are using this as a as an opportunity to check people out a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. Although they're rushed off their feet, I, I think they have big concerns that this may be um, hit by fraudulent activity. So they are being very careful. I know um, my team are telling me that we are getting an increasing number of calls from HMRC checking people out, making sure everything is okay. And 99.9% uh, .9 of the, the checks that they've done, we've been able to say, yes, they are. Uh, we have had one recently who was currently practicing as a bookkeeper, but was only a student with an A1 and A2 under their belt. Uh, so unfortunately, we had to say, no, they were not qualified to be offering uh, tax advice. Uh, I'm not sure what will happen to that person, but it, it didn't sound very nice. Anyway, um, so I think they'll be doing that. Plus, there'll be a lot of people who will be doing their own returns and that, I think that's always a worry for government that they have a non-skilled person working with quite complicated um, data and trying to put that through. Uh, so we, we'll, we'll see how it goes but uh, anyway so it's looking at we're, we're getting close to some businesses getting some money either through their loans or through mm -hmm. the, the payroll and, and this grant will be coming back. Um, you mentioned earlier that you, uh, that Sage now has sorted out the C bills, the uh, continuation of business uh, loans. Uh, you've got materials where people can start putting together their applications. Well, there's, there's various sort of things that we've got. We've got um, on the we've got a funding assessment tool on Sage.com, and what that is is um, a tool that I, I know. I'm talking to some practices have been getting clients to go on or they can go through with clients and it'll ask them a series of questions based on your energy type, um, how you pay, you know, do you pay rates, do you own the building, etc. And it'll come back with a list of all the services that's available to, to clients. I was talking to one small practice yesterday and she was telling me she's been using that as a way of helping clients and yeah. getting some information and come back, you know, and it's things like, you know, um, if they're paying business rates, 
the councils, you know, uh, every council's different. And I think that's the thing with, with the local bookkeeper, the ICB bookkeepers, who understand the client's business and you understand how the local authorities work as well and are in a good position. So I, one example I had is they contacted the, the local council who said, this is exactly what's going to be expected. She shared the information with the clients and she didn't get any calls from her clients as part of that application process. In terms of, of, of um, business loans, I think that's, that's a bit of a, you know, we know that's a bit of a challenge out there in the, you know, from what we're hearing, not every business that is applying is getting it through. And that's all about having complete full set of accounts, you know, as, as part of that process for me is, is about having complete records. And again, if, if you've got a good, like, well, I'm not going to say good, if you've got an ICB bookkeeper looking after you, working with you, you're going to have a full set of accounts, you're going to have that record that allows you to get the, the information that shows this is your past performance and this is where we're, where we're looking to, to be at. Put, yeah, I, I, I think there's a, a very mm -hmm. strong pressure from government for banks to lend as much as they can, but mm -hmm. only to good businesses. Yeah. Um, this money is in a, is supposed to be there for good businesses. We've said this so many times. Good businesses to stay the course for this extraordinary three months or however long this lockdown is going to be. It's not there to try and prop up businesses that were on their way down anyway, and and that is a difficult area. And I know that um, we I was um, listening into a, a webinar with some people recently and talking about the government and banks working together, but. Really, if a business doesn't feel that it, it is willing to say, yeah, we'll cover the 20%, if they're not confident enough for 20%, why is the government having to be confident enough for 80%? You know, So they're all the, the usual um, things being batted backwards and forwards, and, and it is a difficult one. And I think also, when we're up against it anyway, and we're coming up against an, an absolutely um, unheard of circumstance uh, for wanting a loan uh, it, it can be it can be daunting but as you say i think if if people are using their bookkeepers properly and the bookkeepers are doing their job properly you'll have a running set of accounts mm -hmm. i mean it might need updating or extending to give a bit more but uh, most of our members are saying that they're absolutely rushed off their feet at the moment because they're coping with mm -hmm. their family their husbands yeah. or their wives you know aunties uncles whoever else is living with them um, so they're trying to keep everybody happy and on top of that, they've got this increased demand from members who are trying to fight their way through this, trying to get through, and not sort of close down and just shut up shop or something like that. So uh, I think it's quite, quite testing time out there. Um, mm -hmm. Having said that, everybody that I've spoken to, and it's still the case, everybody I've spoken to, is very, very positive. And they do see that when they come out of this, the new customers that they picked up to help them through this, I think they think at least three quarters of them will remain as good customers in and on when, when we come out of this. Mm. My only concern is that I, I have just read actually that the health minister has said that we could be in lockdown for another 18 months. So I'm not sure if that is bogus news <laughs> or what, or whether she's still in her job as we speak, but uh, just because <laughs> we'd have to lock down until there is a vaccine available. Like I, it's the first I've heard of that. And I've only, I've only just had a quick read. It's on the BBC News. So, wow. as I say, whether or not she's still today. in the job. Um, Mary, can I just come in? Hi, it's the seagull lady. Uh, hello, hello, seagull there. lady. Hello. Lovely to see um, you. Just a couple of things. I, I, I was listening in rather than tuning in, but there are a couple of things that popped up from the meeting I've just come away from, which incidentally was with all the other uh, accredited uh, bodies um, and their representatives. And just to pick up on the sea bills, the loan scheme, one of the things that was coming through from the other uh, professional bodies was that even if they've got the accounts, one of the problems that's holding up the loans is the cash flow forecast and seeing how oh. you're actually going to pay it back. And they think that that might be an issue. And I, what I got from HMRC was that they are looking into seeing if they can streamline the process. Just oh, that's good. I mean, we have been mm -hmm. talking about cash flow a bit. Um, We've actually got uh, Caroline Plum from Fluidly coming on next Wednesday, and she's talking about 
I mean, Caroline's a, a really good speaker, those of you who know mm. her from our, our conference. So she'll be talking about the general principles. She's not going to be selling fluidly from start to finish. Um, a bit like Julia and say, Julia is, is, you know, we know her well and she knows her stuff. So that's why she comes on here. And we, we don't expect her to be um, pumping the, the products every time. But no, it, it, it's good to have people who are like, people like that, who are very um, linked into our community, are the people that we talk to because of that. You know, So, so that's great. So it was an interest. It was an interesting meeting then. Yes, it was. Um, the other accredited, the other uh, professional bodies, getting exactly the same queries that we are. I mean, it was the questions we've been asked. They were getting we put together. A lot of them they couldn't answer. We've been asked to email them in, and they're going to try and speak to the powers that be and get some information, as I'm as I'm sure Julia and Sage are doing as well. Mm -hmm. The one thing I, I'll come back on. Um, Julia was talking about a few minutes ago was the actual application on the portal, um, I think it's if it's 100 or more employees, you can do an mm -hmm. automatic upload from the file. But if you've got 99 or less employees, as Julia said, you have to do a manual entry. And what HMRC was saying is that you have to be very careful if you're in manually inputting the details of all of your employees, you're gonna have to be very careful so that the, the, the names, the spelling of the names match up with the national insurance numbers and everything else that you're putting in there to make sure that the system doesn't fall foul because the spelling of the name, those of us that have complex spellings to their mm -hmm. names will know to our cost that if you get one letter wrong, it may not pick it up. So it's just be very careful. Yeah. And there's wow. no copy and there's no copy and paste no. either. It's key in only. It's key so in. if you yeah. if you go a bit keyboard happy like <coughs> me. <laughs> yeah. Proofread so. everything before you press send. Yeah. Right, so all this automation is not worth it, really. You've you've got to get it right. You've, it's back to the yeah. old manual system again. So, but I mean, yeah. our members all all have to do this as part of their exams. Every, everything is entered yeah. in, whether it's yeah. on Sage or wherever it Absolutely. is, or you know, Absolutely. they do that. So that's good. The other point that's already cropped up that Julia answered was um, looking at the submission for the file only agents. Um, for those who don't have an agent that's got full uh, responsibility to, to speak and do this, so if it's having to come back to the company, they are trying to streamline the employers themselves getting an online pin to get in to be able to do the submissions themselves. Apparently, where it's all been by letter, they're trying to streamline the process, possibly by emails. We've watched this space for that to happen. So they're trying to make it easier for people to get their uh, mm -hmm. registrations online. That was the um, only thing that's yeah, true. I mean, there are a lot of people who still do their own, obviously, but they tend to be the smaller employers. So, mm -hmm. presumably, uh, you know, they, they, there aren't many people to, to be put through this for the majority of those people. But it'd be interesting to see. Um, let's hope that's good. Julia, I've got a couple of specific questions yes. here from you. Uh, hi, Julia. This is from Chrissy Applin. Hi, Chrissy. Yeah, hi, one of Chrissy. Our <laughs> major um, social media people. Um, do you know when next week the job retention tool will be released? One of my clients who uses Sage Payroll need their monthly payroll run on Tuesday the 21st and they furlough staff. Do you think it might be available by then? Um, I'll be honest with you, we're hoping to be ready with HMRC because um, we're still waiting to clarify a couple of aspects. So, um, and our developers are working hard. If it's not on the 20th, it will be shortly after. I know you've got um, clients who are furloughing on the 21st. You would process that payroll as normal. As soon as the tool's available, you log on and you, gen well, download the, the tool, run the report, select the employees, and that will generate all the information that you need to sit and key in so you can start the process. If it's if we're buying on available on the 21st. My tip would be, um, we will we are putting messages in your software to tell you um, it's coming soon. And when it's live, there will also be emails. So if, you, if you've not got the details, or if you're not sure if you're not set up the email, please let me know and I'll, I'll check with our guys because I know communications, we've got a communication plan is both email and in the software. And Chrissy, I just hope all of your clients haven't got 99 employees. So you've got to enter every <laughs> single one. Um, another one here from Linda. One of my clients has furloughed staff mid-month. So in next month's payroll, they will be paying uh, part full pay and part furlough pay. Will the Sage job retention tool be able to pro rata to cope with this? 
Um, I will come back to you on how that works, if I can get the details of the individual, because um, it's based on a date range, so it all depends on what period they fall in. So if it's part of the period, you would, you know, it all depends on how that's being processed and how that's being set up. So I'll get one of our payroll experts onto that, if that's okay. And if okay. anyone wants to see the tool in action, from Monday next week, the web, if you go just go on to sage.com, go on the account and bookkeepers webinars, the tool is actually being shown, shown there. I thought we had a webinar tomorrow. We don't, but we do have them set up for every day for the next two weeks. So you can see it in action and there'll also be a quick 10 minute demo video as well. Okay. Oh, that's good. Well, that was, that was Pam. Pam, I hope that helped. If not, um, you, You've just heard about the, yeah. the free demo, but um, make a mention of that and we will we'll be looking at all of these questions anyway to be answered. Yeah, yeah. Um, can, uh, this is from Lisa Phipps. Please, can I check my understanding before I report back to the client, please? If someone started on the 27th of February, February payroll ran on the 26th of February, so their first RTI was the 26th of March. Are these now ineligible for furlough on the basis of that an RTI wasn't sent with their details before the 19th of March. Same for an employee who started on the 15th of March and paid the 26th of March. Please. I don't know if Jackie, if you're still around, if you heard yeah. that one. Um, I think the guidance on the HR, if you look on the uh, employer's details on the HMRC COVID-19 web page, it is quite specific that if you have not had an RTI submission made by the 19th of March, you are not eligible to claim any furlough payments for them. I raised this at the meeting and they're going to try and come back uh, with an answer, but they, the people I was the, were on the meeting, I've got to go and refer to a higher authority, shall we say. But no, well, if, if the RTI has not been made by the 19th of uh, March, it is quite specific that these people cannot be furloughed. Right. Estate agents are saying their commission is compulsory and should be included as part of the basic pay for average earnings. So will the SAGE tool include commission pay elements within the assessment? Um, it, it, it'll include what elements you tell it to include. That's what I thought. We, if you, put, you have to put it in correctly to get it out correctly, yes? Yeah, yeah. So it all depends on how you set your pay, payroll elements. So, for example, overtime could be a valid... So if you've got a pay element that's called overtime, then that is there. And because you've got all of the the reports and the software to support that, if there's any queries, you can go back and demonstrate the yeah. payroll. Because that's what HMRC will not be familiar with. I think yeah. we were talking about the commission payments last week um, or the week before, and, and I think we'd agreed between ourselves that if the commission is part of your contracted income and is regular then it's included and hmrc did confirm that if it's sort of like a one-off commission which you yeah. don't normally get then it's not included for your furloughed pay mm -hmm. it has to be regular regular income rather than basic pay originally it came out as basic pay but it's one of those details that they've changed once as we have said in week one of this HMRC, we're getting a huge amount of information out and everybody's been feeding back into the system and it's been amended nearly every day and they have now changed it to cover regular contracted income. So are you saying there for Jackie that in the case of an estate agent, because their commission is only based when they make a sale and it can be huge amounts or, or low amounts, that's not regular or can it be average? No, it's regular. But it would be, what it would mean is that the average calculation would be based... The, if the income is not regular, so it varies from month to month, it specifically states that that's where we come back to. The payment for each month is the higher of the relevant month in the last year or the average of the last 12 months. And that can be done to suit the employee. It can be done to basically. suit month to yeah. month. So if you get a really good month last year, pay the higher. If you've got a really poor month last year, you pay the average. Um, yeah. And the okay. zero workers goes back over the weeks that they've worked back, I think, for the last 52 weeks, working weeks. Or right. as much as well, they've been working. Thank you. Right. Well, that was Mary. So I hope that answered that, Mary. 
Now I've got a Marie Benstead. Hiya, I have an employee who was employed on the 5th of March. Payroll was not run until the 26th of March. Therefore, HMRC were not aware of this employee on the payroll until the 26th. And I furlough her. I can see you saying no there, Jeff. No, he I has a contract know. from the 5th. I know, but it has to be, I think Julia will confirm, it mm. has to be a submission that's been made um, so that HMRC actually have the pay submission. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, it is a moving feast. Um, the latest change came yesterday, late yesterday. Yeah. So who knows? There, may, there might be another one coming out at any time. But at the moment, yeah, some people are still falling into uh, quite a big crack. Mary has asked, when will the Sage 2 be available to install? Uh, Mary, I think we probably just answered that one for you. Uh, Julia has not exactly put her neck on the line, but with cross fingers said she hopes that it's going to be Tuesday-ish. Yeah, but, Monday, Tuesday, yeah. yeah. So I, I tell you what, as soon as I've got certainty, I will send a note through the ICB. After tell everybody about uh, that, that's great. Yeah, yeah, as well as through your software bar, mate. We'll make sure you guys are, there's an announcement through you as well. Right. Uh, this can is I, from Gary, can I, sorry, can I preempt a question you and I talked about this morning that I know you were going to ask Julie, but there is a question on the question and answer. Is this the employer's allowance? And that's the employer's allowance, yeah. Um, Go ahead. Julia, the employer's, employer's allowance is going up to £4,000 from the 6th right. of April. But we have this de minimis state aid, and I've been getting some queries and trying to get my head around it, but even without the de minimis bit, um, because we don't know if the grant that's coming back is going to be de minimis state aid or not yet. But yeah. with the employer's allowance, presumably, if you are not paying employers NI for, say, April, because you're within that £4,000 allowance mm -hmm. and the grant comes back, what actually is going to happen to the allowance? Because you're not actually claiming it back, are you, if you're not paying it? No, and I, I, my understanding, it will pick up whatever's been included on a payroll. So, payroll. Yeah. So, if it's not the the way I look at, it, simply if it's not there in on a payroll calculation, it'll not be included. But I'd be more than happy to look in. Yeah, some that would help. You're guys. getting a lot of queries. My my view has always been that if you're not actually paying it and you're within your allowance, mm. then. Uh, you, the allowance will, I think the allowance should still count from the first to the 6th of April to use up let, your 4,000 yeah. because you're not getting it back. So, therefore, well, let, once you get to it, if it's still within the furloughing period, then you'll get it back. But if not, the 4,000 4, doesn't start at the end of the furloughing period. That's mm. how I would read it. Yeah, it's, it's based on because you put in your furlough period, don't, don't you? And it'll be based on. Yeah. The average to that date yeah but obviously your ni will be lower because you're paying a lower mm. gross of anyway course. so it's going to be of course it on the, yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. We'll, we'll get but, some, we'll get something yeah. on the website and i think it would be great just to loop you in with some of the i call them the domain guys get jackie in with we'll be familiar with adam prince from previous oh. <laughs> yeah so adam's looked in all of yeah. this okay brilliant okay um, right. I've got one here from um, Anonymous. Uh, zero hour staff, what do we pay them whilst we're not working? They cannot be furloughed as we receive public funding. I've not come across this before. Mm. Any ideas? Why does it make a difference that it's public funding? Jackie? Uh, it's, it's due to the fact they're being paid. This is like, also, we've had this one where we've had nursery schools that are getting funding for the, for the next term and they're closed and what's happening about that? I'm not sure we've actually come up with an answer on that one. Can we look into that and get back to you? Okay, I'm uh, anonymous. We can't get back to you personally. We will put it up on our hub. Uh, and again, uh, at the risk of repeating myself, if you go on to the bar at the top of our across the top of our website, uh, www.bookkeepers.org.uk. Uh, there is a section there saying uh, resources. You hit that uh, button and it will take you to a, a range of articles and you hit the, the COVID-19 button and that will take you to our hub. Now that hub is being updated on a regular basis. I have to um, say that we found recently a batch of questions that we think came from the first or second of these that we ran right back 
feels like a year ago now, but a long time ago. And some people are only just getting responses. And, you know, I apologize for that. We're not quite sure why. It's not a huge number. Uh, but Paul Ingram, for example, Paul, if you are listening, um, your question was caught in one of those banks. Actually, the question you asked, I think, was answered live anyway on the program. I remember Jackie answering it. So, so hopefully that was okay. Uh, so if you did send in a question, uh, whatever it is, four, four weeks ago or something, and you're suddenly getting it answered, this means you, you fell off the, the, the table somewhere along the line. Um, but uh, So somebody was sitting on a, a strange email box or something or other. Um, afternoon, this is Jason Alderson. We have two new members of staff who started early March. We're thrilled they can now be furloughed. They work variable hours. How would we calculate the furloughed wages going forward? Hmm. Well, sorry. are they not on a fixed, fixed would, salary? Can you say that? Sorry, I was reading the one that's coming from Chrissy with my name on it. So, sorry, can you, <laughs> which one, Gary? Uh, this is the one from Jason Alderson, which is just after the one about public funding. Afternoon, we're two members of staff who started early March. We're thrilled they can now be furloughed. They work variable hours. How would we calculate the furloughed wage going forward? In other words, they've, they've not got anything to look back on and against which to I estimate. I think it's the same as those who started partway through February. You've got to pro rata, work out what you paid them on the first couple of weeks, and then uh, calculate the 80% of that going forward if they're furloughed. It's pro-rated. Okay. So that will still apply for this month. And Alan Thomas, what, char what reference would you need to use for a charity as they often don't have a UTR or company number? Is this the charity commission number? Pass. Yeah, I remember I saw that last night on a forum. We will... Maybe we, ask yeah. we need to check on that one. Alan, thank you I very will. much for that. Um, it yeah, will, yeah. All of the questions will be taken offline anyway, so we will respond yeah. to that somehow. I might be able to update you on that tomorrow. Um, yeah. So let's see. Yeah, let, let's try and do that one. Um, apologies if this was discussed far around when you started. My clients have started employees 16th and 11th of March. But as monthly paid the RTI for starters, didn't go to HMRC until 27th of the 3rd. Faye? Yeah, no, I think that answers well, the one before. I think it's it, they're going to fall through the gaps again at the moment. Yeah, I've, the raised, moment. I've raised it with HMRC and I've sent, sent that in in my list of questions to be answered. So uh, that's gone up the line in HMRC this afternoon because I asked that knowing that it was going to be raised today but at the time nobody could give me an answer so we'll come back to you on that one but jay snell i have to provide time. right um jay snell i had to provide a two-year cash flow forecast to assist a client with their loan application which was nearly impossible use of float linked to uh, accounts did help but feels very unreasonable to need this in the current circumstances um yeah the problem is that we're giving away billions as a country and there has to be some sort of control. Um, you know, companies that are geared up to do this are probably likely to be more professional companies, companies that are good companies. Uh, and it's an easy win-win um, if you can do it, I think. But that's what you're there for, Jay. Good, good for you. Let's, let's hope uh, your client gets the money that they're after. Employment allowance, do you have to use this for the months of April and May and therefore not claim? I think this is what we've just covered, isn't it, Jackie? This is Heather Fitton. So she's talking about, yeah, we, at the moment we're saying you, we don't think you can claim for something you're not paying. So the employment allowance, allowance goes in first and then uh, that, you don't claim for it again. Uh, bonus allowance until the next. Or can you hold this allowance for to use later yeah. in the year forward. yeah i mean this is another bit of that black and white information that comes out great isn't it really yeah absolutely absolutely um chrissy's just put one in up to me julia might be able to answer this one i'm sure it's been covered before for zero hour contract employees should holiday pay be included when calculating the 12 month average mm. That's a technical one. I'll have to phone a friend. Yeah, I think <laughs> our view is that 
it should be because otherwise they would be working and that that holiday yeah. pay has been based on the average of their last well it would, would have yeah. been then 12 weeks it's now 52 yeah. working weeks i'll make a note of these yeah, yeah, my, yeah that would be great I believe that is the case. I think I think we'd already had that clear with I think it was with Claire when she was on, just saying uh, um, Claire Warner. That is not not Claire Allen. We've had two Claires, too many Claires. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think that I think that's what they were saying because it's trying not to not pay people what they deserve to get. It's just trying to make sure that we don't pay people what they're not they're not supposed to get. Um, Anna says, can you confirm with the new 19th of March furlough date? I have a client who employed someone from the 2nd of March and has submitted the first payroll on the 30th of March. Can they now be furloughed? Is that? Say that again, uh, Joint employed on the 2nd of March, went into the first payroll on the 30th of March. Can they now be furloughed? That's a 30th. new employment. No, not, no. not as it stands at the moment. This is a slightly smaller group of people, but the group of people that are still falling in through the gap. Okay, Chrissy Applin, by the way, has said thank you, Julia. Uh, we've got <laughs> Jules, BIB here. Oh, Jules, hi, Jules. This is Buckkeepers in Buckingham. I was trying to put it in Hello, Jules. <laughs> hi, Julie, how are you doing? Hello, Julia. If we have to run payrolls before the tool is available, would you advise that we set up new pay elements and manually calculate the 80% for the time they are furloughed if employers um, topping up to 100%. They are suggesting pay elements, I believe. What I'll do is I will get you the, there's Ask Sage articles on there now. So process the payroll following the Ask Sage articles, the furlough calculation tool you will select the pay, pay element, so it will calculate 80% of that. So whatever pay element you're using, do it that way. So if you're topping, using the pay element to do the top up to 100%, create a new pay element for the top up element, if that makes sense. But I will get you the, the Ask Sage article. Okay. I've got one here from the bookkeeping something um unfortunately i'm not getting the full name because it's quite a long question how about employees brackets directors who are on the annual payroll scheme rti and everything filed at the end of april for the 219 20 year the employees have been included in earlier years also on the annual scheme can they be furloughed mm. I would say yes, because yeah. they were on the payroll and they have got a payroll submission under RTI within the mm -hmm. date. The fact that they only pay themselves once a year uh, doesn't matter. They they would use the last payment yeah. as their average. Um, as I long as it's PAYE pay, then it's okay, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they've been, they're on the system. And they've been, if it was the first year, then that would be a different matter. But if they've been on the scheme for a while, then I think if Julia agrees, it mm -hmm. will count. You've just got to work out what it is and yeah. follow the normal furloughing rules for a director the funny thing i mean we've had this a lot and particularly about dividends and i know there have been a lot of people lobby on dividends but i remember many years ago i when before i was even thinking of starting icb or anything like that um i had a uh, an investigation from hmrc just a normal one came in to see how i was doing as a new company and they said to me um do you have any other sort of employment? Because I, I was employed by my company, obviously. Uh, I said, no. So they made me sign a form to say no. And as soon as I signed it, they said, well, what about your dividends? I said, well, that's my company. They said, no, you're, that's different. So that, it brought very home, home very quickly to me that the dividend payments are completely different mm. to what you pay yourself as an employee. So you're treated partly as an employee and then completely different as a shareholder. And um, we're getting this question a lot at the moment from our members saying that they're getting a lot of pressure from their clients to say, well, look, it's my company. I'm paying myself, et cetera, et cetera. So that hasn't changed yet, has it? It is, n dividends just do not come into it. No, yet. and it is actually in the HMRC guidance that dividends are not included. Uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, we I think we've Actually, got that. Is, can we just go? Bev's just put a question up about uh, again about paying staff. 
Bev Arnold. Hi, Bev. Um, if a seasonal business employed staff at the start of March and RTI submissions were made on the 6th, 13th and the 20th and then closed, can they now re-employ and furlough? The answer to that is yes, you can because they, you have got an RTI submission. So that's fine. Take them back on. Uh, and, Bev uh, Arnold here. Yeah. Have you seen them on Bev Arnold? Is a seasonal 331. Business. Yeah, that's the one I've, yeah, I've just seen that's them on Gary. So that one's fine. Right. Okay. Chrissy Applin, yes, you're not taking enough notice. Uh, yeah, we've done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah it's, all, it's all included. It's, uh, I mean, you have to put the case forward as the bookkeeper. If, it look, if it's obvious uh, that it's, it's proper, it looks uh, a reasonable um, uh, claim, then I, I think that's it. So the holidays, we've said, have to be included in that, certainly. Um, are Guernsey in the Isle of Man within the EU for state aid de minimis rules? I have a charity who receives large grants from both of these. Sylvia, uh, I need to check on that because Guernsey and the Isle of Man both fall out of our money laundering regulations, for example. They have their own rules. Um, so have you got any experience of Guernsey or the Isle of Man, Jackie? Got anything in? Nothing there, at all. No, I, I saw that one. I can't, I can't answer that one. We're going to have to have a look. All right. Sylvia, we will look into that and we will put that on the hub. Um, and if I get a definitive answer, I'll try and mention that tomorrow. Uh, Kat, can I attempt to make a claim for furlough pay for both March and April next week for my employers? Most of them are running their April payrolls next week. Any answer, Jackie? Well, oh, actually, I think, I think probably we've been though. able to pay furloughed mm -hmm. workers during the March payroll runs yeah. anyway. So, and you can't claim it back till next month. So if you run your April payroll as normal, presumably when the, the portal opens, you claim mm. whatever you've paid up to that date. I think a lot yeah. of the questions are going to be answered when we can get access to the portal. Yeah, and it's a maximum of two weeks in advance, isn't it? When when the portal goes live, you can also claim for two week up to two weeks in advance of your pay employees. I think monthly. it's as long as you've done the RTI, isn't it, Julia? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. that picks up a question where people were asking whether what happens if they can't afford to pay net pay until they get the furlough grant back, and can they hold withhold their payment? Mm. I asked this one at HMRC, mm. and of course I. I did say I don't expect an answer, but I'm going to raise it anyway. Um, and of course, I didn't get an answer. I think they said that that's what the loan is to cover, isn't it? It's 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 that yeah, missing link. but with the loans not coming through, every no, exactly. has been left in in limbo. I think you probably need to talk to your employees, see what they will, ex you know. And if I don't know. We shouldn't give the information, perhaps, but I, I would have thought that if if your employees are thinking, well, I'm, if I'm going to get paid. Or not paid i'd rather wait an extra week and get it i don't know um i've got a few questions coming through on the chat line which is the facebook chat line so I, i'm just checking on that um bookkeepers in buckingham again julie will the tool be part of an update she says um yes it will be an update but it will be uh, quite a, it's a simple file update so it'll automatically install um and by the way julie the article you need to use is 463 Seven six, which I'll pop in the chat afterwards. I kind of do both at the same time on this iPad. I don't want to break anything um, that tells you about furlough. So yes, it will be an update that will be automatically installed, and you'll just need to, once it's there, it will just be a new option in your software. We we'll need to get you on that webinar so you can see it in action on Monday. Right. Question here again from Facebook, Lynn Campbell this time. If a payroll starting February wasn't submitted to HMRC by the 19th of March, brackets, as set up was waiting on lost UTR being sent, can grants still be claimed? Mm. If it's legitimate, do you reckon, Jackie, or...? Sorry, say that again. I... Um, it, the payroll starting February wasn't submitted to HMRC by the 19th of March because they were waiting for a lost UTR to be resent. Can they still claim the money. Can you do a respective submission? Late submission for RTI, Julia? Um, I would need to take that offline. Some of these questions I don't have. Yeah. Uh, the 
yeah i think that's quite a technical one uh, we, mm. i think we've had a lot of questions about almost rolling back payroll and re yeah, yeah. payroll and resubmitted it and it's i think it's quite a, a gray area at the moment about what you can and can't do mm -hmm. right and and not clear on any corrections either is it at no. the moment on hmrc uh, Kevin Jarvis has asked a question here, which we've already been asked, which is about uh, people who are paying themselves uh, an annual um, amount of money, and we think that they can be furloughed, and they work, you know, if it's an annual fee, it doesn't matter, as long as they were paid last year, you, you can work it out on that, can't you? Mm. As long as they were on the team, on the, on the uh, staff by then. And Carol Shipley, hello Carol. Um, if you have limited agent payroll status for a client, will you be able to do their claim for furloughed wages? Is that a no, Jackie? It so, uh, uh, depends what they mean by limited. The file only people can't. Right. Uh, so that so has to be on their, um, their, on their clients. Well, their clients mm. would have to do it basically. The client they can still instruct them. I mean, you can put it on a spreadsheet, what they've got to put in, and the client will just have to type it up. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. I hope that helps, Carol. Uh, Jan Drury, how often would you claim for a weekly paid employee? Would it be every week, or can you claim in advance? Isn't it every three? Well, it's a minimum of three weeks, isn't it, mm -hmm. Julia? I don't. Yeah, yeah. I, have we actually ascertained how often you can apply for the furlough grant? I I'm not hundred percent sure, but I know you can. Oh, like my understanding is up to two weeks in advance. Yeah. So the portal goes live, and I, I think a lot of these questions mm, will be answered will be answers, when the portal yeah. open, and we've logged in, and we see exactly what we we. What, what the sort of questions are and how often you can do it. Carol Shipley has said FB12. Anybody, any idea what that means? Yeah, it's, it's a filing authorization. On so she's got an FB12, right? So is that good that enough? should be sufficient, <laughs> my understanding. Is that right, Jackie? Um, I'd have to look up exactly what that covers, but we would hope so. PYE and CIS. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if you Filing. can deal mm. with HMRC or you file your clients as an agent, mm. then yes, you can do it. It's only those mm. who have this file only, which I have to say is new to me. I'm sorry, yeah. but it is. Um, that you can't actually, because you don't have access to all the information, do you, that you need to do yeah. the, grant, the grant application. What, what I've seen on, on the forums, um, suggestions from, from others, is to go into your HMRC and see what your, your, your gateway, agent gateway account, and see what you can see for your clients. If you can see all of the details of the clients, that should be sufficient. <coughs> but in my understanding, an FBI too should be enough. So I'll just How far have you got down the questions, Jackie? Because I've just yeah, I've got, got a couple. Of, uh... I've got a couple coming in on the question and answer. Uh, Susan Lang, hi Susan, hello from sunny hi, Newcastle. Susan. Hello, Susan. Susan. Oh, she's, <laughs> up. she's up by you. Um, if an employee is told to take holiday, the employer can't include this in the furlough claim, can they? Well, I think the answer to that is no, they can't because if they're on holiday, they're not available to work, so they can't be furloughed. Um, so you would have to bring them off a of furlough, put them on holiday, and then put them back on furlough again afterwards. We have had this um, discussion about whether they can force people to go on holiday rather than furlough them. Because of course, everybody's building up a lot of holiday, which is gonna be taken at some future date. Have you heard anything more on that, Julia? Um, I haven't heard anything from it other than the employer has to agree everything with their employees yeah. and if yeah. they feel that that is good for the business it's whether or not they can get get the agreement mm -hmm. on the on the positive side the people will at least get an extra 20 percent salary mm -hmm. but uh yeah it, it, a week's holiday so they may have to hold yeah. their holidays for goodness how long yeah um and uh yeah it, it is a difficult one isn't it so um, Liz has asked about the self-employment income support scheme uh, after the deduction of capital allowances. Um, I agree that it's quite difficult, this one. Um, 
I, we did discuss this at the meeting this afternoon because, for example, if you are a London cabbie, a black Lond a London black cabbie driver, um, you're being you're having to buy if you're changing your vehicle, you have to now buy an electric vehicle, which costs mm -hmm. upwards of forty thousand pounds or more, and they're being claimed back as capital allowances and reducing the amount of taxable profit that you can therefore claim. Um, I agree with you, it seems to be very hard. We've raised it. Um, we're waiting for a confirmation answer back. But as it stands at the moment, it's the taxable profit after capital allowances, so after all reliefs and allowances. Right, okay. Um, that question, by the way, did you mention the one question I asked from Susan Lang that you just answered, the other one about Yeah, that's the holiday one, about yeah. taking holiday, yeah. Hi, Susan, good, good to see you on with us. Um, and I've done Lisa, we're down to it. support scheme trading employment. Yeah, that's it. That was Liz Edge. That's great. Uh, Helen, sorry, I'm trying to read through the questions before I, I read something which shouldn't be up there or I get it, make sure I get it right. Refurling it halfway through. Have you answered this one from Helen? If uh, so no, I was just reading it. Yeah, it's quite a long one. Uh, uh, halfway, I'll leave you deal with Mary, the one below that. With the yeah, dividend. will dividends qualify as profits for the self-employment income support? No. 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 Dividends that aren't classed as anything, it can't cause anything, can they? No, but also you don't pay dividends if you're self-employed. You pay them if you are um, limited. Yeah, I, I'm, really, mm. I'm just wondering whether it means that they are getting dividends in addition to their job for which they're self-employed. I don't really know, but yeah. anyway, Mary, no, uh, dividends are definitely uh, not not acceptable as far as I'm aware. Jackie's leaving the Helen. Yeah, one. I'm looking at, at Helen's. This is to do with how often you can claim and she, that you can't claim until the employee's been on furlough for three weeks. I think it's going to depend this one. Um, you cannot claim back your income until you've done your RTI submission. And then you have to claim for a minimum of three weeks furlough. So it's going to be very date orientated, this one. If you think the furlough can go back to the 1st of March, and we're now half, halfway through April, we're already six weeks into this. So people should have payroll information on furloughing um, ready to claim back once the portal opens. But it, if they're furloughing them now, for whatever reason, because they've been working maybe to clear backlogs or something and now they're being furloughed, then from whenever your furlough period starts, you've got to wait three weeks mm -hmm. and then claim in whatever next claim right. date you make, if that makes sense. Is that right? Is that yeah. how you see it, Julia? That's right. That's my understanding. I will check out our Q&As. Yeah, just a bit of clarification here for the one where the... Uh... UTR number had miss, been missing. It was something to do with inactivity. Um, typical client, I suppose, uh, wakes up every now and then and then expects it all to fall down around, fall down for them. But uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I think you've had the answer. It's, it's a question of uh, you trying to do a bit of um, helpful, creative bookkeeping, really. Further the incident in March. Further to the reinstating of levers in March, do we have to rerun March and submit uh, a revised year end or can they be reinstated in April with a start date of the 15th of March to avoid reworking year end? Lynn. That's definitely well, Julia. <laughs> definitely so, Julia. Yeah, so running. that's a, the run a year end. So, sorry, can you just repeat that? Further to the reinstating of levers in March, do we have to rerun March and submit a revised year end, or can they be reinstated in April with a start date of the 15th of March? Um, I'll have to get back to you on that one. I don't, I don't want to give a wrong answer, sorry. <laughs> I think right, I okay. Gonna crop up I need to jump on the live Q&A sessions, I think. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we get one of our people quite a few times. Follow-up question, re-employing restaurant staff from Bev Arnold. Hi, Bev. Do they re-employ and pay from now going forward? What about the period when they weren't paid? Thanks. You can furlough them back to when mm -hmm. they were laid off, can't you? 
Yeah. You can, I mean, kind of, I yeah. Mean, but if they were already employed and been furloughed, then they should have been being paid furloughed 80% from when they were laid mm -hmm. off. Yeah. It's only really those that were employed after the 1st of March and then furloughed, which might cause an issue, I think. Yeah. I must say that, generally speaking, I really have my fingers crossed that all of these small restaurants do manage to get through this and come out at the other end because we're all, all going to be dying to go out for a meal. But the big scare that's been put out at the moment is that if we're not careful, we're going to end up with all the big guys lying the high streets and the back streets rather than any of these fantastic little restaurants that everybody frequents. So, so that'd be great. I'd, I'd hate to lose all of the, the Indian and uh, uh, Italian restaurants and everybody else and just be faced with a, with a long row of McDonald's and KYCs and everything, even though they are really good, obviously. Lisa Phipps, I have to dash off shortly, but wanted to thank you again for what has been for this it's been incredibly helpful thank you lisa that's what we're here for and uh, we're, we're here to try and help you get through all of this uh presumably if an employee had a change of contract in december going from full-time to variable hours the furlough calculation is done on average hours since the change in contract is this correct and that's from lucy brown lucy hi um I've, now we've got a couple of lucy brown so i might be wrong in presuming that's uh, the lucy brown that came on uh, the, the show a couple of days ago and, and gave us a chat. So, um, what do you think, Jackie? It, yeah, it's a different type of employment. I mean, yeah, uh, difficult one that, isn't it? Because it's not a new employment, is it? Mm -hmm. No. Um, so, they were in employment at the twenty eighth. So that's yeah. the good news. Um, it's just working out the the the, the, average yeah. the averages whether you include. I mean, it's like the zero hours workers, isn't it? Because mm. some of these are going to actually, I hate, we said this the other week, almost seem to be better off under furloughing because they're getting the same amount every week, whereas otherwise they may or may not be working. Yeah. And that might just be one where, because of the nature of it, if you take the average over the 12 months because it is a variable, I or think you take February, no, it's variable hours, so it, it follows the variable hours calculation. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose you have to take into consideration why there are variable hours. It could be at their request. It could be at the employer's request. We yeah. don't know. Um, but I think as a, a really good bookkeeper, which I know, Lucy Brown, you are, mm -hmm. I think probably you have to say, you have to try and work out what you think this person is expected to earn during the year ahead. I mean, I presume you've done a cash flow at some stage or somebody has and... and um, you have to be able to justify your decision. If, if you feel hand on heart that you can do that, I don't think there will be much of a comeback. Mm. But automatically assuming that they're going to be earning the same as they did when they were in full-time employment, you know, I, I don't know. I think, I think that might be a bit risky. Um, I think we've just got to be realistic and as close as we can to getting this right. Nicola Payne. Hi, Nicola. Uh, you can apply once every pay period, so it depends on your payroll. Oh, that was my comment about I'm not sure how often you can claim or you can apply. So the question, well, I've got um, some insight from my colleagues who've been working on this is um, HMRC haven't yet confirmed how often you can claim. So that's, I think it's, as Jackie says, when the system goes live, more yeah. information. And we don't know yet what time it's going live on the 20th, if it does. So it may be, <laughs> we may be inundated with questions if it's at nine o'clock yeah. in the morning. <laughs> we'll hope that it's five o'clock in the evening so we at least get. <laughs> so uh, Mary's just said, I heard an employment lawyer on LBC, Daniel Barnett, said that the employer can state when the holiday is to be taken. Thank you, Mary. The only thing is I'm not quite sure whether you're, we know that the employer has the decision power if staff are working from home but are still fully employed, uh, was the information this morning that that is also the case if people are being furloughed? I think, I think that's where we're, uh, we have a, a slight difference of opinion there. Faye has said, couldn't the employer pay off holiday pay and reduce from the annual entitlement? I'd like to say top up the 80% furlough pay. Again, I think that's probably the same one. I, I think we need to get a bit 
clearer advice on that first, so before we give you too much, but hello again. I think um, if they're on holiday, I don't think it's, it's not furlough, so you would pay them their full holiday wage yeah. and then re furlough them again when they come back from holiday. Susan Lang is back on. Thank you for the answer. Uh, that's what I thought too. Ah, jolly good. At least we're getting a, mm -hmm. a consensus there. What should you do if you know that a company is asking employees to take yeah. holidays? and you think that they might be trying to claim furlough at the same time. Um, well, that's fraudulent, Susan, yeah. and I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, you either decline the offer, or um, decline the instruction, rather, or, or yeah, you, you have to report that to HMRC if you believe it's gonna happen, fraudulent. and somebody is gonna do it in your absence. I mean, yeah, absolutely. My client's employees were followed as at the 16th of March, so I can't claim under until the end of April. Is that right, says Claire? I assume you apply, you apply as soon as the portal's open, mm -hmm. as quickly as possible, and the payments are supposed to be coming back as quickly as possible, as I understand. Wait till Monday and log in, and as soon as you can apply, apply for what you've paid. I think it's... They're going to base the agreement on checking the RTI that's already been submitted. So if your mm -hmm. RTI has been submitted, HMRC know exactly what you've paid. And yeah, you I, claim it back. I think they've already said that the, the only delay that will take place once the forms have gone in is they want a couple of days to do what they call a fraud check. They're going to just make sure, a risk, sorry, a risk check. Risk They're risk. going to make sure that it ties up with the information they already know about you. So... Uh, you know, again, they're, they're just keeping uh, careful. Sorry, another quirky one and going off east. What about property rental income? Will they qualify for self-employed income support? No, I don't think, I think we covered that one and I think we've had it confirmed that that is not considered to be self-employment income. Okie dokie. All through the gap, I think, that one. Can you furlough employees on different dates or do they all have to be furloughed at the same time? Different dates, any date, isn't it? It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just a minimum of three weeks and you can bring them in and take them out of furloughing. You can furlough them for three weeks, bring them back to work for a week and then furlough them again as long as it's a minimum of three weeks each time. That's right, isn't it? And providing all staff agree it and there is no question of it being, um, you know, and, you know gender, non-gender yeah, specific or any sort of you, bias, Right, think. yeah, you've got to make sure that you get your discrimination uh, sorted and yeah. it's not discriminatory. Can the grant only be claimed after the RTI has been submitted for the same period? Uh, it can only be claimed once it's been submitted, the RTI has been submitted. Yeah. Thank you for fighting our corner. Good to know that these questions are being asked. Thank you, Jackie. Best wishes, Liz Edge. Oh, hi, Liz. <laughs> Uh, for variable hour staff who were furloughed mid-March, do you include March in the calculation for the 12 months as March is not a full month? Jason Alderson. Is that the calculation for the... Um, month? No, I would, I, I would go back. Julia can answer this one because she knows mm. how her tool is going to work. I would say if they're furloughed mid-March, you're looking at... 12 months up to, I would look at 12 months up to the 28th of February. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, pay, you think... pay them for March, but their furloughed is going to be, because March is part month anyway, so I think you'd go from February back. Is that right? Yeah. Is that how I, it's going to work? I would believe so, yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. I wouldn't, I think the calculations for including the first two weeks of March is going to be a nightmare. It's going to make mm -hmm. it, keep it simple. Um, I won't say keep it stupid, but keep it simple. And, and as long as Faith you... Says, no, go on, sorry. I was just going to say, both Claire and Ian, the payroll specialist that have been on, have said, providing that you keep full justified notes and calculations on what you've done and why you've done it, and it's reasonable, they think HMRC will accept it. And if they don't, then they'll come to some arrangement. They won't yeah. sort of uh, take you away in your pyjamas at six o'clock unnecessarily. But uh, anyway... Uh, Faye says, referring to Easter Monday and Good Friday. Now, I've forgotten what the question was on that one, I must admit, watching this scroll. Oh, was that a holiday? Was yeah. that to do with taking holidays? Now, funnily enough, I spoke to one of our members um, this morning, I think I rang her, and we were talking about companies who... 
they take bank holidays as part of their 28 days and what should they be paid and should they be on holiday and I think actually I had the I actually had the employer on the end of the line at the same time or employer on the end of the line at the same time <laughs> All right. which was an interesting conversation <laughs> and we were discussing the fact that as long as you have agreed and you're paying them the full day's pay for Easter Friday and sorry Good Friday and Easter Monday when they're on holiday and claim furlough for the other four days of each week then that is probably it's an advantage for the company in that you're still paying them what they're entitled to and the minimum and also it's not carrying forward the bank holidays into the next two mm -hmm. years for holidays but I think it's got to be done in agreement this is probably where this lawyer said they can state when they take their holidays so if your contract states you get 20 oh, days plus yeah. eight days bank holiday, then Friday and Monday are holiday days for everybody. They should be paid the full amount. You can't claim furlough back and you need to watch it because the furlough has to be a minimum of three weeks. Wow. Yeah. ACAS advisory holidays and bank holidays does not take furloughing into account and is open to interpretation, says Helen. I, so a lot of information is. Yeah, I looked on the ACAS website this morning, funny enough, to try and send some information, a link off to someone, and decided it was less than helpful in this current situation. Following directors, a financial services client has a monthly commission, passive income, from customers. The director phones their customer just to say hello and let them know that they haven't been forgotten, generally give them some love, but not to upsell. If our client did not do this, then the customer may go elsewhere and our client would not be working in the best interest of the company and not fulfilling statutory duties. Uh, can our client still find the customers to retain them? I don't think that's covered by statutory duties, is it? Statutory duties is filings, isn't it, basically? Yeah, but actually, funny enough, I have the sections in the Companies Act that we were talking about. Sections <laughs> 171 to 178 of the Companies Act details what you can and can't do. I haven't had a chance to look it up yet, but I've got it on my piece of paper. Um, so we'll work that one out because you obviously yeah, have a fun life, Jackie. Yeah, it's what you can't do is income generation work. But is that income generation or even protecting income? Surely that is income generation. It could be. Yeah, I think we need to seek advice on that one. Mm. Um, and. Uh, our gross RTI submissions, if part month works and part furloughed, won't match the claim. Assume as long as only furlough claimed on portal, all good. Are you with that one? Our gross RTI submissions, if part month works yeah, and part that's furloughed. That's because half month. of it's been paid and half of it's been mm -hmm. furloughed. Yeah. yeah. What will happen with the tool when it's... The tool, um, the way the tool works, Jackie, is it's based on pay, payrolls that you've run and you yeah. would select the pay element. So if you furloughed someone, you you, you create a pay element. Furlough. Yeah, you furlough. So therefore, if you're, and if you and if upload. Someone's part way through. Yeah, so yeah, if your yeah. tool uploads automatically for a larger mm -hmm. company, it will you select it and it will do the correct submission. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it manually, mm -hmm. Presumably, if they do come back and do an audit, if what you're claiming, you can see from the payroll yes. details that it's yeah, yeah. a furloughed yeah. element, then yeah, that's yeah. fine. You will be doing that. And even if you've got more than 100 employees, it generates a file. It doesn't pull straight from software. You have a soft <laughs> we have to generate a file that would be, need to be uploaded. But you, right. you would have a full view of what you, you've submitted. Yeah. And the calculations. Mm -hmm. Claire has come back to say, but RTI was submitted at the end of March, so it's only two weeks of furlough. Next RTI will be submitted at the end of April. I thought that might be why I have to wait. Uh, you might have to, because it's only yeah. two weeks of furlough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, number three. Jason Altersky. Hi, Jason. has come on to say, re-rental income rules specifically reference trading income, so would uh, rental income would be precluded. That's the interpretation there from Jason. Uh, Paul Ingram, um, thank you for this afternoon. I have another webinar, webinar meeting now. Our life is becoming full of <laughs> webinars, isn't it? You know, 
it's coping with them all. You know, it's worse than trying to fit <laughs> proper meetings into a diary, I think. Anyway, Paul, it was nice, it was nice to see you around. Um, and I uh, hope to catch up with you face to face in some space. Um, and Jason Alderson said, thanks, that's what I've done so many. Thanks, just wanted to double check. Yep, it's always good to get somebody else to agree with what you're saying, isn't it? Um, and uh, working in the best interest of the government manually at Bright, right, only wrote them for a page four. Fay says, manually as Bright Pay only wrote in furlough from April. So, for, yeah, that's Bright Pay, I've been catching up with that. Yeah, okay. Mm. Um, I, Anonymous says, I have to visit a client to complete management accounts and VAT. No one else is in the office so safe. Is the journey permissible? Yes. I mean, some people haven't actually left work, have they? They've just mm. um, been told they've got to be careful and mm. where the work cannot be done elsewhere. You can go they, in. Uh, mm. They should do it elsewhere. But uh, whoever Anonymous is, um, you, you need to think about uh, getting yourself into the cloud uh, if you can. I mean, some employers don't like people taking um, payroll information out of the office. So I, I can understand some of that, but no, as, as far as I'm aware, there is nothing to stop you doing that. But please be careful. Um, you know, make sure nobody is around and uh, just uh, make sure you, you keep your distance, as they say. Um, okay, so trying to keep a customer is probably regarded as income generation. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's a difficult one, to be honest with you, because um, I know some people are doing webinars with their uh, clients etc etc i'd like to take try and see if we can find a bit yeah. better information on that but i will go back and email my contacts at hmrc mm. on that one and see if uh, but i've got a funny feeling it's it's to do with company law and what what is and is not allowed so we'll try we'll come back to you yeah um thank you very much. Thank you very much for answering my not very well worded questions, Claire. Claire, we didn't even notice, and by the time I've read them out, they are completely different anyway. But anyway, um, <coughs> if you are calculating qualifying earnings for pension reclaimable, is it based on 2019-20 or 2021? Another one from Jules at Bib Bookkeepers in Oh, Jules, you're asking uh, hard oh. questions. Yeah, I know. She's like that. Um, fellows... you need to... <clears throat> qualifying earnings for pension. That's going to be based... Is that going to be based on 2021? Because the qualifying earnings no, is, 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 is above idea. the lower... The qualifying earnings is above the lower earnings threshold. Mm. So it's what you put through your payroll. So I have a yeah. funny feeling it's going to be 2021. Jules, we need to get you on to the live Q&A for accountants and bookkeepers on, on stage. It's got a lot of people who will get you the, like, the information. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, okay. Uh, where are we now? Thank you, Gary, Jackie and Julia. Really helpful. I've got to go as I've got a client call to return, but really appreciate all your help. Thank you. Stay safe. Chrissy Applin. Right. Chrissy, you, Chrissy. has left the room. Uh, thank you also for the bookkeeping. I don't know what the rest of that is. I need to try to see if we can find that somehow. As the bookkeeper uh, team. I can't see the questions on the panel. Is there a way to activate this, please? No, we hold on to we We keep the questions at the moment. They're all being answered, trust me. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's just the way we write because there are so many of you looking at this. We don't want to start throwing this out to too many. Um, if my client wants her employees to take 10 days holiday in April and she will pay 100% for these, can it be included in the furlough claim or not? Well, I think that's the one we're trying to chase up, isn't it, really, yeah. about furloughed employees. If, if they're working from home... Well, if you're going to pay... Yeah, let's see. No, I think we better check on that one. I don't know what you think. Uh, Jane says, you've mentioned creating a pay element for furloughed employees, which is fine from April payroll, but what about March payroll that has already been processed without the pay element for furlough? As, I'll double check my belief is part of the assessment tool. When you run the assessment tool, you pick the pay elements. 
the for it to do the calculation. So in the last in the first couple of weeks, we were advising mm -hmm. to separate out the furlough pay yeah, anyway, yeah, weren't we? So yeah. you could see what was paid, what was earned income, as it were, and what is furloughed income. So. Right, what else have uh, we got here? Ah, the book, bookkeeping, the abbreviated is for the bookkeeping team. Well, hello, bookkeeping team. Uh, great to have you with us. Sorry about that. I think it's just the way that they come up on here. Uh, I'm concerned about the bank holiday pay for furloughed staff, says Usher. Again, I think that's one we're checking out. There are so many grey areas in this. Um, mm -hmm. If the RT has already been done for last week and now this week at 80%, help please. Right, okay, we will... Uh, we will there are a couple on the, the chat line, Gary. There's one again oh, that's claiming back the furlough every three weeks. If the furlough period is, say, 10 weeks and claims are made every three weeks, will the final week be able to be claimed? Well, I think it's when you claim. You don't have to claim mm. every three weeks, do you? It's a minimum of three weeks. Yeah. I think it's going to depend when you run your payroll. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a claim every three weeks, is it? Yeah. And I think this has caused a lot of confusion. Quick one on self-assessment for 1920. If you submit your self-assessment 1920 now, will HRC take it into account when they're looking at the average profit for the last three years? No, it's up to uh, last year, yeah. 1819, which is why there is a panic for some people to get their 1819 tax returns in up mm -hmm. by the 23rd. So this year, no, it's not included. Right, let's just have a look there. Right. Um, okay. Now, uh, just to go off the questions now, because actually I, I think the questions, have, um, we, we'll take those back we'll, offline now. Yeah, we're coming yeah. to the, the end of our time. You know, does time go fast when you're enjoying yourself, talking about furloughing and everything? <laughs> um, I mean, what on earth are we all going to talk about after next Tuesday when it's all finished? You know, and <laughs> we'll, we'll, be hearing, we'll be hearing about how it's all going and then getting ready for the, for the next wave in the middle of May. <laughs> Now, Julia, um, obviously, when we come out of this, we're going to have a huge mess in the books. It's going to look different. It's going to be completely uphill down Dale. Um, and a lot of our members are taking this time of um, you know, not actually being able to leave the house, etc., to do extra study. And one of the big things everybody is studying is FRS 105, FRS 102, because increasingly our members have been asked to do the filings at the end of the year, etc., yeah. etc., um, are you going to build something into Sage, which what I call you press a button, you know, there's a lovely button that somewhere somebody presses and they, you're going to start sorting this out. I mean, you're building this grant, which is obviously going to be income. You're going to build all this in somehow so that your, your, your lovely software will sort this out for them. In, in terms of the, the all the, the, the Just, income, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So what we're recommending, going, you know. so we, we are recommending that people are recording the, the grants and the income as they go through. When it comes through into your final accounts, it would come through as income. You know, if you, if you were using Sage accounts production software, um, it would be recognised as income because that's how HMRC are telling you, you to, yeah. to deal with it. Um, so it would be tread like any other grant. So the, that would be considered as part of your, and it would be tret as such. So Jackie, I don't, uh, or, or uh, Julia, mm. I don't know if either of you know what happens then if. Yeah, and no, I was just trying to think. It, it's all right. We've had, we had a question. I don't think it's quite right. Was if the income of your company drops and you drop below the VAT threshold, can you now? just relinquish your license or do you hang on on the basis that you're going to need it back again one day i mean they would hang on wouldn't they i think jackie really i think it's a, certainly a client i had decided to deregister and then very quickly realized that it was the wrong decision this was going back mm. some years and re-registered again and uh to say that it mucked the system up was an understatement because you're refunding, you're claiming back. You, you, mm. It's a nightmare if you deregister and then choose to register again. And I think it depends on how long this is going to go on for. If businesses are likely to be back within, say, three months, if they can get working again, then 
I would I would I would advise to stay registered because yeah. obviously the minute you stop red you deregister you can't claim the VAT back on your inputs anyway. Well, no. look at, you know over well it's like forty percent if not more of businesses are below the VAT threshold. You know you know in terms of yeah, yeah. MTD there was you know nearly a million when didn't fall under MTD because it would be below. Mm -hmm. Jason Owls, the son has just said thank you all. As always, very informative and helpful. Much appreciated. Thank you, Jason. Um, and Graham here has said, I hope other bookkeepers agree, but I am going to use this opportunity to encourage clients to put more of their income through PAYE, mm. which in turn reduces corporation tax. So, mm. yeah, I think this is one of the strong messages coming through. And I, I don't know, having had uh, <laughs> Bill Dodwell on from the Tax Simplification Office way back in the early days of this, um, I get the impression that... Uh, this, this might be put upon them in, in some form of new legislation at some stage because, uh, you know, they are trying to, what? Ah, right, okay. So, yeah, um, I, think, I think that's coming. Um, first look. Taking a dimmy. Read my last comment from Graham yeah, regarding directors. I have a feeling that HMRC may be taking the dim view of directors persistently putting through minimal amounts. Yeah, I, I, we agree, Graham. I think the idea is that um, you should pay what you re what is regarded as a reasonable salary for the job that you are doing. And then the, the, the dividend is a bonus to you uh, being almost treated like a separate person. Um, who has put money into that company. It's just the same as if you put money into British Gas, you know, um, the shareholders of British Gas are not going to get furloughed. So uh, it's, I think it's that same general idea. Thank you so much, gang. Brilliant help. Oh, we're a gang now, folks. How about that? That's not bad. <laughs> Mary, thank you, Mary. We're a family. <laughs> and that's a great point, Gary, says Ian. I'm sure it was. I can't remember which one it was, but <laughs> I'm very pleased about that. I think... Um, it's getting to half past four now. We're coming um, to the end of this um, current issue. Uh, so I need to thank my two gorgeous ladies for coming on and, and helping me with this. Uh, Jackie Mount, who has uh, who's been popping in and out uh, quite regularly. And obviously, Julia, Julia, thank you so much again. I know everybody appreciates it. And uh, judging by the... <clears throat> uh, foot tall statuette that you have someone in your office there uh, that everybody appreciates you so uh, thank you very much for coming on and uh, we hope that uh, you know we all continue to help our members that our members still continue to be very positive about all this and we all continue to work together as we come out of this come out on the other side as the most important things for small business you know bookkeepers are here to be helpful and they are just proving beyond any possible doubt that when things get tough, the bookkeepers, ICB bookkeepers, are there for you. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming on this afternoon. I know we've had, we've had a lot of questions. If we haven't got to your question, I do apologize. They will go offline, and uh, we'll, we'll see you all. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Look out for tomorrow morning and, and find out who my guests are going to be. They're going to be good. Thank you very much. Hey, Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.